Okay, hi. Um, this is Holly Lyle, and I am delighted to introduce you today to E.J. Clark. He is the owner of Silver J Media, which is a manuscript, um, public, a manuscript editing and proofreading company. And uh, I'll let him say hi here real quick. Hi, uh, glad to be here. Okay, um, the first thing I want to do is go ahead and put up a poll for you over in the sidebar. Um, okay. I'm going to start that right now. You will see the results at the end. But the question to this is, how many finished but unpublished stories do you have on your hard drive right now? Uh, so go ahead and start clicking and answering that. And EJ and I are going to go ahead and get started with uh, what we're what we're going to be talking about today, which is getting your manuscript professionally edited uh, and proofread in order to be able to present to your readers uh, a, uh, a manuscript, a story that is of the same quality as you would get if you were working uh, with a commercial publisher. So um, first, EJ, uh, you're one of our guys. So how did you find How to Think Sideways but Writer's Bootcamp? Um, yeah, actually, I I think a couple of years ago already, I did a Google search one day because I'm I also have a day job, and I always dreamed of you know walking away from it all and just becoming a full time writer, author, and one day I think I just Googled writing classes or how to make a living writing or something like that, and I remember the first thing I found almost right at the top was the your Mugging the Muse PDF, probably one of the older versions, but it was it was a fantastic collection of, of little articles and stories and just so inspiring actually. And at that point I thought by myself I need to keep tabs on uh, what you're doing and what you're going to be doing in the future. And yeah, I downloaded a lot of those little magazines that you did, well, I shouldn't call them little, um, but the Forward Motion or Forward Vision, I'm not sure, I can't remember the name. Forward but, Motion, yeah, that yeah, was Those good. were also very, very good, fantastic stuff. Forward Motion. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, yeah, I just kept tabs. And once you came out with How to Think Sideways, How to Revise Your Novel, uh, your four clinics, and yeah, I just took them all because it's just so interesting and fantastic and inspirational. Yeah. All right. That, it's it's cool to know that we have people within our our midst who are are doing uh, commercial quality and professional work in in other areas. Um, so how, tell me, how did you start with the editing and proofing for indie publishers? Um, how that got started is, in fact, when I was working on my own manuscript, um, my um, I went online and I got some some quotes on what the editing was it, and it wasn't even a big number I put in. I think it was between 100 and 120 thousand words, which is what I thought might be, you know, a, a good length for a manuscript. And the quotes I got back were astronomical amounts. There was one dollars, and I thought to myself, <laughs> how can it be this expensive? I I could buy a, a of that amount. So I remember thinking then that, you know, I think people do struggle with this. Who could think? Then at that point I didn't yet think of doing editing myself. And then a couple of years later, or a couple of months later, I came across a Kindle book that I bought for myself personally to read. And there were many, many errors in it that I could pick up in the first couple of pages. I found a dozen, two dozen errors, things that I could improve on. So just in a crazy moment, I sent an email to the author and I did a sample edit for him. I took the first five pages and I edited them and I sent it off to him and I told him, look, this is the way that I can improve your story for you. Would you let me do it? I won't even charge you because you, know, you didn't ask me to do this. I'm just doing it by myself. Um, and he said, "Yeah, sure. <laughs> that would be that would be nice." He said he realizes he needed editing; he just couldn't afford it before. And when I offered to do it for free, he said, "Okay, sure, let's do it." And um, 
yeah, that's pretty much how it started. That's a hard uh, after to turn down. After a little while, I... <laughs> yeah, uh, that's why I repeated the offer a little while later when I found your resource boards on the How to Think Sideways forums. Uh, so I made the same offer there. I said the first three projects that people will give me to edit, I will do for free. And I just wanted to get a foot in the door, and it worked. <laughs> That's that's a good way to do it. Um, that's a lot of what I did too. Okay, um, yeah. you mentioned doing sample edits for clients before they commit to the project. Tell me a little bit about this. Yes, um, sample edits is something we included in our whole business model from day one because I found that often clients. Okay, there, there's two problems with with just committing to an editing project. Um, often people. They kind of wonder, be necessary for my manuscript. You know, there's a little bit of wishful thinking going on. People thinking, maybe just this <laughs> once. I don't really need editing. I don't want to spend the money um, because it, it it is some money that you have to invest in it. Unfortunately, it's <laughs> so. Unfortunately, this perfect manuscript thing that um, is very rare. Uh, in fact, it's. Uh, it's uh, pretty much neither have I. Something that, yeah. So, yeah. So in the same way that people go to car dealerships and they get test drives, you know, you get to see the product before you commit to it, before you commit your hard-earned money to it. It's good to know what you're getting because editing isn't like, you know, walking to the grocers, picking up a couple of items, and going to the checkout. You know exactly what you're going to get before you commit to giving. To paying for it, editing is, is is a bit more. You know, you commit and then you pay, and you only see the results coming after. And I think people are afraid sometimes that they'll commit to a project and it'll come back, and their manuscript would have been so good that I made maybe two edits in the whole thing, and then they'll have wasted their money. <laughs> um, like I said, yeah. not that that ever happens, but I think people are afraid <laughs> of it. So. Sample edit helps to alleviate that, but the second problem that we <laughs> that we face is um, I divide the services we offer into different levels, packages. You can read all about this on our website. It's a way to for a way for a client to economize, you could say, so that you never have to pay for it for a service you don't really need or don't want. So we have you know the one level is proofreading, basic proofreading. Uh, you can add an add-on to that, Proofreading Plus, which goes a bit more in-depth. You can add another add-on to that, for instance, sentence-level rewrites, and we'll actually rewrite portions of your manuscript if we can improve upon it. Um, and then, for instance, your package B is your full edit, critique, uh, more in-depth stuff. So we, we divide it like that to help the client save um, by not having to take any services that they don't think they really need. But the problem with this is every manuscript is unique. You're not going to know what it needs before you have the edit complete, which is another problem. So in order for people to know to what level of service they need to commit beforehand, sample edits is the perfect solution. Sample edits reveal to you, let's say, the sample edit we do is up to 2,000 words, or 10% of your entire manuscript, whichever comes first. Uh, and that sample edit, we, we edit as if you took the entire suite of editing. Everything we, every correction we make, every suggestion we make, we put in the sidebar, the, the service level that you will have had to select in order to get that edit. So by the end, you can, you can review your manuscript, you can see all the edits in your sample, and you can decide for yourself, look, if the first 10% um, had 20 proofreading corrections but only one in-depth critiquing correction, then, then you can decide. You know, that, that's going to extrapolate to about 200 proofreading corrections over the course of the entire manuscript. That might be worth investing and fixing. But then, you know, if your budget is tight and you've got only uh, the one critiquing error, you might decide to skip that part. So all the sample edits do is give you peace of mind that we can really improve on your writing. We, we can show you what we have to offer, what value we have to add to your manuscript, and that gives people fantastic peace of mind. 
I think it's an awesome service, and I would like to say that the edit that uh, I got back from you the, the uh, for uh, Enter the Death Circus had wonderful comments in the sidebar, uh, along with the many errors <laughs> that you found in it. Um, We'll get into that again in just a minute. But the next thing I'd like to know, what are some of the most common problems that you see with manuscripts coming into your, your shop? Because um, it's unique, but more than that, every author is unique. So uh, they tend to have a very wide range of you know, areas of the writing craft that they have trouble with. But I would have to say, I think the correct usage of commas is a very big thing. It's quite often people have trouble inserting them at the right places, or they insert too many, or they are not quite sure how to demarcate, you know, parenthetical phrases with either the commas or the em dashes. That's, that's quite a big one. And um, I think adverbs as well. I know that all the uh, writing advice that you get, you know, common wisdom is avoid adverbs at all costs. I wouldn't say at all costs. Often there's only an adverb to do it, <laughs> to, to, to say something. But I see it quite often that people overuse them and when they're not really necessary. So we try to rewrite those parts, not to use adverbs. <laughs> All right. Pretty much. Um, I'd, I'd like to, to stop at this point and say you found in my 20,000 word manuscript over 200 um, errors and corrections. And this was yeah. after uh, I had had the content, I had revised it, my, my revision, and then I had had it. I'd run through my beta reader, and I'd run through my content editor, and I had um, had gone through all the spell checking and everything, and it still had in that space more than 200 uh, errors, including typos and a couple of uh, my patented run-on <laughs> sentences, and um, some some of my interesting usage with commas as well. Um, also, <laughs> oh yeah, it was it was um, full of me. And uh, I have to say that, that by the end of the edit, there were only two of your corrections that I didn't use, and both of those were because I actually preferred the archaic use rather than your actually correct, um, more modern usage. So um, this, was, this was an amazing experience for me. I'm, you know, I've worked with editors for years, and uh, I got the same level of professionalism from you that I got from them, and uh, without you trying to rewrite my work. <laughs> so, um, you, I know that Glad you've got. <laughs> I, I'd kind of like to to let our folks know that what you're offering for them is something that is unique, exclusively for How to Think Sideways members, and that is a discount structure. So, if you would go ahead and let them know that even more than being able to pick the level of editing they want, there are some special benefits that they get. Yes, definitely. That's that's the whole point of doing this, is to offer your guys, you know, the How to Think Sideways members, uh, some special discounts that we're not going to be offering to anybody else. Um, okay, first I must note, these discount levels are called bronze, silver, and gold, but just keep in mind that this has nothing to do with how good your manuscript is or how good your sales are going to be. That's not what we're saying. This is the only way for us to differentiate between uh, how clean your manuscript was and how easy it was to edit. So just that as a caveat. Right. Um, we've got the bronze discount, which is a 10% discount on our base price for any Express Pay projects. Now, Express Pay is simply our way to say cash projects, you know, not extended credit or something. Um, any projects that you just settle in the normal way. That's so the bronze discount is built in for how to think sideways people. 10% um, discount, no questions asked. After that, we take a look at how clean the manuscript is, how easy it was to edit, how quickly it went, 
it, it all comes down to time, time spent. Um, we've got some impression sheets that we use behind the scenes to, to you know, figure out. This is not an exact science, but we do keep track of which edits are easier, which take longer, and then by the time you hit the silver level, that's for a manuscript that is reasonably clean. You know, it's average uh, in terms of editing time spent. The silver discount is another 10% off, but because we can't um, determine this beforehand, before we've edited the manuscript, and we want to be able to give you a firm quote so you can work out your budget, the silver and gold discounts, anything above bronze, is given to you as a coupon code of sorts, like a certificate that you can redeem on any of your following projects. Um, okay, and beyond the silver, I probably should have said this first, uh, the gold is for exceptionally clean manuscripts, like, for instance, the one you submitted was was fantastically clean. <laughs> I breezed through that. It was hardly any effort on my part, uh, and that would have been gold discount without a doubt, and that ends up with another 10% discount. So the total that you can um, rack up by actually having a very clean manuscript is about 30%. What about? Exactly 30%. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, which I think is, is amazing considering that your prices were already incredibly good. Um, what I would like to do now is take a second here and I want to show folks how they can go ahead and start signing up because this, because it is a How to Think Sideways members only discount, can only be reached through the How to, Sideways, how to Think Sideways pages. So what I'm going to do here um, over on your pop-in, I'm going to display, okay? Uh, but further, there is, it's a need manuscript editing or proofreading, start by requesting a sample edit, and the link will take you to the login. But um, it's not on the login page, so let me show you. Um, right, oops, okay. We're going to start with the hub so I can walk you exactly to the page, okay? And start there. All right. Now we're you have logged in. You are on the classroom hub. <clears throat> you see your name over on the side there, and right down here, um, right here, you will see the new member benefits button. You click the Member Benefits button, and the Member Benefits button will take you to our two member benefits that we have now, Booknick Biz, and the new button for Silver J Media. Click that, <clears throat> and you get the Silver J page, um, which explains what EJ and his folks are doing, and uh, explains your special deals, and then I'm going to show you exactly how these special deals work. Okay? Let's say that I want to uh, request a sample edit. I click this and it sets up a page for me and right at the bottom here so that you know that you are getting the discount you'll see the HTTS special discount right there and it tells you what the levels are you fill out your information and you uh, choose your file right here which will allow you, wow, that's messy. Okay, let's cancel that. <laughs> uh, you choose your file and you add uh, your manuscript for him to go through, and then you will get, uh, like he said, the first 2,000 words or 10%, uh, whichever is smaller. Right, okay. Um, and then you just submit. And it's, you know, each of the three things that you can do on the page. Uh, are equally simple. You can request your sample edit, you can request an estimate, and you can actually submit your editing project right from the How to Think Sideways page. And this will go straight to EJ and his folks, and they are very prompt. Uh, I was amazed by the turnaround time. Uh, and I was also amazed by how thorough the edit was and, and how very good. So, okay, so let's get back to... Um, yeah, just a, a reminder, it's, it's important for people to, at the moment, the way it's set up, uh, 
when they go to any one of those three pages, I mean, those pages can also be accessed from our site, from our menu structure, but uh, if they want the How to Think Sideways discount, they need to access it directly through your page and through your links. Otherwise, we won't pick it up. So that big yellow box will always tell them whether we are registering it and picking up. So very okay. important, make sure that you log in through the site and make sure that you see the big yellow box before you go ahead and submit. Um, all right, and then there were a couple of things that I wanted to, to or one more question basically that I have for you, EJ, which is what is your best case scenario for a client? What do you hope that you're going to see with manuscripts coming in? Um, okay, well, firstly, what I would love to receive is a perfect manuscript with no errors at all. That would be... <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best. But since we already said that those don't exist, uh, we'll actually settle for seeing some of the author's passion in the work. That is that is a, a close second. A technical point of view, but if if it comes across as having Okay. Um, you can see that. We can see that when we read it, and in the end, your readers are going to be able to see it when they read it. So, so what we're saying is, on the other, on the flip side, your story could be very challenged from a technical point of view. You could have a lot of corrections that we need to make, but you could have it be passionately told. You could have your passion and your love for the story come through on the page, and that makes it all worth it. So. It really is that simple. Um, when you showed our page there, people could probably see our logo, our motto, is uh, Passion Perfected. And the reason we have that is because we understand and we expect that the client will put their passion into the story, and it might, it'll be messy. It'll be, as you said, the manuscript will be full of you. And that's perfect. That's fine. That's what we want to see because we can work with that. We can we can work on the technical issues. But, you know, as they say, you can pay someone to raise your children for you, but you can't pay them to be a parent to your children. There's There are limits to what you can outsource. And in this case, it's, it's similar. You can pay us to perfect that passionate story that you put down there, but you, you can't expect us to inject passion into your story from scratch if there's none there. You know, if we have nothing to work with, if, yeah, that's pretty much... <laughs> that's awesome. That's pretty much it. We love to see people be passionate, and from experience, it'll, it tends to follow. If someone is passionate about storytelling, uh, if they're already passionate about the storytelling, they will tend to be the kind of person that also wants to get better at their craft that want to improve. Back we get will help us focus on that and the people who, who keep getting better at their craft, better at their storytelling, uh, those are the people that we love seeing come in, that we love seeing manuscripts of because it, it's a joy to edit and it's a joy to see someone, to see an author grow their craft and their skills from manuscript to manuscript. It's, it's fantastic to see that. That's All right. <laughs> um, one of the things that, that and, um, I look for, my, yeah, my... Best um, case scenarios. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, was, I was wondering somewhere in there that's, um, of course, f we often wonder from the, from the client's point of view, what is their best case scenario, and I'm sure you can... Uh, elaborate a bit on that side. That's something I don't know yet. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, well, I've, I've been a, a, a client of various editing things for years now. Um, generally not editors that I've paid. They're generally folks that have been paid by the publisher. So there is a little bit of a conflict there between the author and what the publisher wants. Uh, but what you hope to see with your manuscript when it comes back is that the editor gets what you're doing. That uh, it's not uh, 
where you're telling one kind of a story, for example, I was telling uh, with Hawksbar the story of a man and a woman who uh, are connected and who find the love that they would hope to have with each other, but in order to save the people uh, of, of their world, they can't have each other. And um, it was it was a very emotional story, and it required both the female and the main lead. And when I got my edit back, the first thing I got was a request to cut about 70,000 words from the story that I turned in at the length that I was actually contracted for. Uh, and I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh, yeah. And I went through... I imagine how you would. <laughs> And so uh, I said, okay, look, I handed the manuscript back to my editor, and I said, I cannot find a place to cut this because everything, I, I don't write wordy. I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm a very terse writer. And I cannot find anything in here. I, I took out, uh, well, I actually tried to take out words and ended up adding a few more because I realized I'd skimped on the story, <laughs> which did not go over well. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, I said, okay, you, if you can find places where I can cut this story and not break it, let me know and I will do the edits. And instead she removed my second main character, my male main character, waited <laughs> until the like. absolute last minute, sent me back the manuscript, well, had, had the editor who replaced her because she then quit, um, sent me back the manuscript and said, okay, we need a turnaround time of 11 days on this. And I started reading through it and went, holy shit, where did my... <laughs> Where did my main character go? He's gone. And uh, the copy editor did thing. Go. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So the whole purp the the whole purpose of the story that I was telling was gone. And um, that's what you don't hope to see. So when I when I say you want somebody who gets the manuscript as a writer, you want someone who understands that a story that includes two main characters probably should include two main characters at the end of the edit. Um, you want to have someone who uh, who knows that um, you are writing from passion, and to hear you say that makes me tremendously happy because the passion is the part of the story that that has to be there for for a reader to Absolutely. to care about it. And then yes. for me also, and this is a, a little quirk of mine. But uh, I've always had kind of a, a good personal relationship with my, my copy editors and my proofreaders. And uh, even though we don't know each other, we've always gotten along well. Uh, well, you know, with, with two exceptions. Um, and I liked having them tell me, okay, this was the point where I absolutely forgot to edit because I got so sucked into the story that <laughs> I, I had to go back and reread. Um, or, uh, you know, you made me laugh here and I spilled my coffee. Or just just little personal notes that let me know that a real person is going through and reading this because as they're, they're in my head and that is as personal as you can be with somebody. I like mm. to know a little bit about the person as they're editing it, what's in their head as they're reading what I've written. So um, no, that, so those are my things. Yeah, the feedback is, it's its the most fun on a project when we can give feedback and have people uh, come back again with questions and I ask them for them to change something. They might come back and ask, well, I've, I can do it this way or that way or that way. How do you think would be best? It's its wonderful to have clients that are you know, interactive and that, you know, it makes the process a whole lot more bearable. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that that was one of the things that made me really happy was that I was able to actually personally interact with you. That I could <laughs> I could say, okay, well, I'm I I want to know why you suggested this because this isn't the way that I would have done it. And then you came back to me with, okay, well, this is why. And in most of the cases, I said, okay, well, I'm going to go with your way. And in that that couple of pages of cases where I preferred a more archaic structure, it was, well, okay, I, I think I actually let you know that I was going to go ahead with mine just because I liked the older way of doing it. Um, but yeah. it was, again, it was very much like work with my ideal 
with my ideal editor, and uh, that was that was cool for me. It really was. Um, and then knowing yeah, that you were going to tell me to cut half of my book, also good. <laughs> um, okay, so um, what I'd like to do now is we we've got a bunch of questions from folks, and I'm going to go ahead and put okay. these up uh, one at a time, and we'll go through them. Um, okay. All right. Let's see. Improv bots. <laughs> okay, yeah. So the first one was what's the URL and we already did that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and skip yeah. that question, Carl, uh, since we already got it. Okay. Now, could you also touch on the experience skills of others who would be doing the editing? Uh, oh, okay. This was uh, this is Sally Driscoll and she said, could you talk a little bit about your professional editing background um, or other experience skills that make you a good editor? Um, okay, this is going to be a tough one to answer, especially because um, it's obviously this is this is live. So, okay, uh, in terms of professional experience, I'll be honest with you. I had zero professional experience until I started this company. Um, I've never worked for big publishing houses. I've never worked for big editing companies. I. Mm, I just found myself with a skill that I developed. Who knows why? Uh, maybe I was just blessed with it, or you know, I worked hard in school, and I I found that I am very anal about some things, about language, about errors, about right versus wrong, and in the end, you know, someone asked me, look, if you you, I learned very early on, let me put it this way, I learned very early on that helping people, correcting them without them asking you is not a good way to make friends, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned very quickly not to do that, never. Um, but eventually I realized, you know, if, if there's some constructive way I could do this, if there's actually a, a place where people might appreciate the fact that I can look at a page of language and find all the little errors that they might not see because they're too close to it, uh, then that's something I should pursue probably. And eventually I realized, well, editing is it. Editing is where. So to come back to the question, uh, unfortunately I cannot give you a list of professional accolades or professional uh, background where I've worked before. And all I've got is the word of mouth of people who have used my services before, people like you, moderators on the How Do Think Cybers forums. So I suppose I would have to say the proof is in the pudding and send us a sample edit. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, I didn't have a college education before becoming a writer either. So, um, you know, you, you do what you can do, you yeah, learn as you, you go, and you get better. Right. Perfect. Um, okay, could you also touch on experience skills of others who would be doing the editing? Um, Others. Um, kind of just generally your focus. Uh, sorry, I mean others like people who help me with the editing, right? Uh, in the company. Right. Okay. Um, I've. I have people that help me in times of high volume. Um, some of them are just like me. They're not necessarily professionally qualified in this field, but I've seen firsthand how uh, fastidious they can be and how particular they can be and I never hand a manuscript off to a second party to do for me unless I am pretty much more certain of their skill than I am of my own most time. Uh, I've got one of the people that I'm using is was an English teacher for 10-20 years so you know it's 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 less and formal education and more actual experience and fastidiousness and yeah that's how we go I I don't yeah I wouldn't use people if I haven't seen them edit and if I haven't seen that their edits are at least as good as mine and that's it right okay um, folks want to know do you write fiction uh, do your other editors write fiction 
Uh, about my other editors, I can't say. I don't, I don't think they write fiction. Um, I do. I have not yet published. I am in the final stages of uh, getting my first manuscript ready, and I'm going to be sending it for editing to Silver Media. <laughs> yes, I got the quote for on 120,000 words. It has recently hit words, so I was a little naive to begin with. <laughs> Yeah, I've had him run with me like that. Um, that can be a little exciting. Okay, um, I have someone here who is who wants to know how long should I expect an edit? Oh, let me, let me finish that one. Okay, how long should I expect an edit or proofreading to take? I got burned once by an edit taking literally several months longer than it should have. I don't know how to a lot timeline to work from my finished writing project on to publication. Okay, that's a very good question. Um, firstly, I need to give a disclaimer that every manuscript is different, every manuscript is unique, and the, the challenges it faces in editing it will be unique, but in general, we, we can negotiate with you for a timeline, and on a 100,000 word manuscript, depending on which packages you take, I could, depending on when you need it, I could work a hundred thousand manuscript proofreading perhaps in about a week depending. Uh, if you take a full edit I would say for a hundred thousand words give me a bit longer maybe two to three weeks um, but yes we, we do work fast if you need it. If we, we usually ask if you can stand to have a little bit extra time if you're not too much in a hurry we tend to apportion your edit to the deadline that you stipulate. But yeah, those are about the, the the quickest that I could imagine going. Okay, um, I'm going to pull a couple of questions out of chat now. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. I had someone who wants to know. Um, okay, now let's we're we're going to because you have different layers of editing. I'm going to make this as simple for you as I can. If you have a 100,000 word manuscript and you are only doing a proofreading and we're not considering any of the extra potential 30% off that, that How to Think Sideways members get, just your basic proofreading 100,000 word manuscript, how much does that cost? Okay, 100,000 basic proofreading. Right. Um, no okay. extra. Well, that's a bit of a curveball. Let me just double check. Okay. No extras. Um, okay. At the moment, I actually, when we determined our pricing structure, I worked it all into the website. And at the moment, even we use the website as a reference. <laughs> so let me just quickly for you work that out. It's a it's a very intuitive uh, website form. Um, Okay, package A, editing. Okay, for 100,000 basic editing, uh, if you settle the, the, the account in cash, that's about $200. Okay, as opposed to, say, 4,000. As opposed to, say, 4,000, yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, remembering your story yes. there. Yeah, I... I um, even this, if you just... To compare it to the 4,000 that I got, if I take the full suite, every single thing that I can think of to add, um, your total bill still comes out to about $662, which is then about perfectly compared to that 4,500. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, there you I know go. that it was just crazy and expensive for me, and I did not get the, the uh, discounts that you have now set up. So um, I was I was thrilled by the price, and it's going to make it a lot easier for me to get my stuff done. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Somebody wants to know how the proofreading discount works. She says uh, she says in my mind, proofreading is when I'm ready to have the digital files made and publish the book. So how would the discount work? I guess what she's asking here is at what point does she send the manuscript to you? Uh, 
Okay. Um, we prefer, uh, like we said, Holly, with your manuscript that you sent, you said you did a couple of extra steps. You did the beta, you did the revision, you did spell check, and all of that showed. That made the manuscript very easy to edit. So ideally, we do prefer for people to do um, pretty much all the other steps that they can. Um, as she said, she's correct. If, if we're going to do a, a proofread for you simply to fix uh, usage and things like that, then the best time to do that is right at the end, finally. Now that's that's why I pointed out how the discounts will work. The 10% bronze is immediate. It's it's built into your first into your current edit. But the the silver 10% that you can add on to that for, for having a clean manuscript and the and, and the other 10% for gold, those you will get back as uh, coupon codes. Uh, we call them certificates uh, sometimes, and what they do is it'll be ready for you to redeem on any future project you do. And the reason we do it like that is, firstly, we like to be able to give you a firm quote, and we, of course, we can't give you a firm quote if we're still going to apply discounts later, because people need to be able to work on their work out their budgets, and we need to be able to work on our budgets as well. So. We give you a firm quote with a 10% discount, and then if you earn some of the other 10% discounts additionally, that'll be for future projects. This is not just for you. This is for you uh, to reward people, essentially, so to speak, uh, for having clean manuscripts. But it's also for us, because a little bit of it is selfish, because what we want to do is we want to entice those people that have the best and the, 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 the most effortless manuscripts to edit. We want to entice them to come back in future. We like to get work in that's that's easy to do because that's that's fantastic. So yeah, we're going to be giving you those uh, uh, discounts. It's, it's something we want to do, not just something we're going to live with because we want to help you. It helps all of us, really. <laughs> OK. Um, I now have a question from somebody who is looking at content editing. Uh, Pamela okay. says, is there a review that does not include detailed copy editing, but just a general critique of readability, organization of plot, and, clar uh, and clarity, and where to target rewriting efforts? Uh, yes, perfectly. There's exactly that. That's when you skip package A entirely. Package A is the proofreading package. That's for language and technical issues. Package B is the content editing or critiquing. It's pretty much like having an advanced beta reader, <laughs> if I can call it that. So yes, if you take package B, that'll be it. For B, you can take an add-on that's the theme review. We will take an in-depth look at your theme and make sure that your story has a beating heart, that it's actually telling something profound to your readers, and we'll make suggestions for you on how to tweak that, how to make that better. And there's also the editorial add-on that will make us write for you on your manuscript, or together with your manuscript, we will return like a one, two, three page in-depth critique to give all sorts of extra information on what we thought about this, what we thought about that. It's just, yes, it's perfectly that. Okay, fantastic. Now I've got a question for you on genres. Um, Breck says, what genres do you cover? Do you cover British and American English? And do you handle special usage like turn of phrase and uh, word twists and puns? Uh, yes, actually. we, In terms of genres, I know it's a, it's a stretch to say we cover all genres. That's I know it's not that simple. Uh, I think we specialize most in sci-fi fantasy, but we do have facilities for handling pretty much any genre you can throw at us. We've got uh, some of the editors we use are very widely read. Some of them, in fact, there was a person who submitted a romance, and I was not sure I could do it, so I passed it off to this uh, one lady that I trust very much and she returned the edit to me and I returned it to the client and she let me know a week or two afterwards that a publisher picked her up and they wanted to do an independent uh, edit and when they came back with their edits they had exactly the same edits that we had so that was uh, it was nice to hear 
<laughs> that is good. That is so, yes, really. So yes, we do. We do. We do cover all genres. We don't. We don't care about. You know, we don't discriminate. Uh, we do cover American English and British English uh, quite easily, and we can also look for you at turns of phrase, puns, cliches, all of that. Um, that tends to be included more in the content editing side. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to take this next question, uh, which is, uh, let's see, did I lose it here? Oh, yeah. For how long is the discount for How to Think Sideways members good? I'm about to publish my second novel. So um, let's see. I'm going to add that up here because this is one from... Okay. Uh, is the offer for Holly's members permanent, or do we have uh, this within a certain time frame? And I will let you know now that as long as uh, people keep coming back with, yes, we, we are happy with EJ's service, and as long as he is willing to continue to offer this, this is, his page is permanent on the site, and this offer is permanent for you. This is not, oh my god, I've got to have this done in the next 15 minutes so that I can get this flash in the pan deal. I don't, that's, that's not what we're doing. Yeah, not um, at all. No. Okay, so, uh, let's see. Somebody says, okay, this is Cheryl. She says, hi, I'm in Australia, and I'm wondering what you mean by settle in cash. Okay, yes. This is what we call our Express Bay uh, payment option, if you could call it that. Uh, it's just a, a way that we call as opposed to a credit line, which is something else we do. You can read on the website about all the details, but settling in cash simply means that on the day that we initiate the project, you, the client will pay 50% of the total editing cost. On the day that we return the fully edited manuscript to you, you will pay another 25%. And then after a week or two, when you have had chance to review all our edits and you have maybe taken our feedback, you've maybe given us feedback and asked for more feedback, that's fine. Uh, when you are happy with it, but probably about two weeks out, you can settle for the final. Not strictly cash all at once, some leeway. Yeah. All That's right. Pretty much. <laughs> okay. Um, good question here. What standards do you use when editing? What is your opinion of semicolons? <laughs> okay. Um, hmm, as for sta the standards, that's a very difficult one to do uh, because if we when we're editing academic writing, which which we do also do, I just thought I'd I'd add that in there. Uh, we tend to ask the client what what standard are they going to use? It's going to be Harvard? Is it going to be Chicago? Is it you know we we figure that out beforehand. Uh, but in terms of specific standards in fiction, that's a very difficult one to to answer. <laughs> we pretty much look, all our editors are very widely read. Um, we get a lot of material in to be able to compare to uh, what other people are doing with the language. We, we, we have a high tolerance for, you know, if you want to do something interesting with the language or funky, we, we offer all the time, we can get what you're doing, what you're trying to do, and we can probably advise you on, is this working, is it going to work in this context, or is it probably not going to work this time? Um, specifically in terms of semicolons, I have nothing against them as long as they're used correctly. Um, you know, as long as each sentence fragment on each side is literally not that, not a fragment, you know, complete sentences all around, um, yeah, you can use semicolons to great effect. And, yeah, we can help you do it. <laughs> all right. Um, we've got a couple more questions here. Uh, before Perfect. before we go to the couple more questions, if you have not yet voted on the poll, go to your sidebar and click on the poll tab and please vote on the poll, which is asking how many finished but unpublished stories do you have on your hard drive right now? And I've got a little comment on this after everybody has voted, so please do vote. Um, and then, okay. Uh, next question is, 
Holly, if members are watching the Google Plus conversation, they're missing the pop-in. Well, okay. Um, okay, so... Huh. EJ, can you just uh, mm -hmm. read out the URL for your site right now, please? Because there are some fo folks who are uh, not getting this, it. This exact. It is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, uh, okay. Um, sorry, you won't be using HTTPS. My apologies. It's just silverjmedia.com. One word, and that's it. If I can, should I spell it out? <laughs> <laughs> well, Silver J is good. I'm going to make sure that there is a live link directly to the site from inside the classroom, um, which I have not done yet, but am actually going to sit here and do right as right now. Or the, uh, well, the next time that EJ is talking, I will add a live link to the page so that folks can actually see all of the different services that uh, SilverJ offers and uh, can find your way around. Remember, if you're buying, buy through the links in the member area or you will not get the discounts. But um, aside from that, yeah, I will put a, a live link up now. Okay, now, um, here is J. Robin King says, when copy editing and proofing... Oh, no, you already did the resources thing. Okay, so let me see if I've got any more questions from the chat folks. And... Okay. Is there a length requirement to manuscripts you edit or proof? Do you do novel... Nove let me try this um. again. Is there a length <laughs> requirement to the manuscripts you edit or proof? Uh, do you do novellas and short stories, or do you only want full-length novels? Uh, you know, there's no limitation at all to the length we do. We have done for people like Holly for you down to 14,000 words, and we've done for others over 200,000. There's really no limit. I would say that in terms of price, there's probably a, a, a $20 lower limit because once we drop below that, no matter how short your edit is, it starts to become difficult to, you know, through PayPal to even get the payment in from the client without the fees eating up almost the entire thing. So, um, yeah, there's a, there's a lower limit to the price for about, from, of about $20. But other than that, no limits at all. Okay. Um, let's see, and then uh, I'm still looking for more questions over here in the chat. I don't want to miss anyone. Uh, yeah, okay, a lot of size things. Okay. Okay, does package B content editing also include copy editing, or do you need to purchase both services? Uh, yes, this is this is why we split them in the in the first place, so that um, people can take only B if they want, but B does not include A. It's they're completely separate, specifically so that someone who wants only a content edit, like there was a question before about that, uh, can have only their content edit, and someone who wants content and proofing can have both. So you just check all the little boxes of what you want. Uh, the, the limitation there is that, for instance, a package A add-on, you can only add on to package A. So you need to have package A before you can select either of its two add-ons. And that'll be pretty intuitive on the website. The, the add-ons only appear once you've selected the, the base package. But yes, content editing, proofing separate. OK. Uh, and that's, we seem to, uh, okay, we seem to have run out of questions here. I'm, I'm looking, okay. Uh, may uh, I mention one that's, that's appeared there? I see there's a question about uh, free second edits or discounted second edits. Okay, good. Um, that that kind of ties into how the, 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 the silver and gold structure works. So you'll always get the bronze discount again, and if your manuscript was nice and clean and effortless for us to edit, uh, you will very likely get a coupon code for either the silver or the gold 
discount, which is either 10% or 20% on top of the bronze. But these coupon codes you will apply to your next edit. So yes, by your next edit, you can very likely have quite a significant discount building up. OK. All right, very good. Um, and I, I think that's basically it. So let's, let's take a look here at the poll. Um, okay. I'm going to end the poll now. And uh, the majority of folks, 60% of folks, have one to five manuscripts to five. unedited yeah. sitting on their hard drives completed right now. Uh, we have 10% with 10. We have uh, no, nobody who has 11 to 25, which that's good. But we do have 7% yeah. uh, with lots. <laughs> Um, and then okay. we have 24 percent of folks who haven't finished anything yet, but if they're here, they're obviously working on it. So, um, okay. if you have five manuscripts uh, between one and five manuscripts sitting on your hard drive, uh, five manuscripts is the halfway point to what is is looking like more and more like the breakout, make a connection point for writers who are self-publishing their work. When you have 10 manuscripts, uh, 10 fiction manuscripts up on your site, you start c collecting people who are reading you specifically and who are going back and picking up your previous works. Uh, so if you have those five manuscripts sitting there, um, you are uh, about halfway home. So it's time to go ahead and, and get some of these things edited and, and get them out and live, as terrifying Fantastic. as that is. And now I have a bunch more questions here. So, okay. okay. Um, <laughs> That's perfect. All right. Hi again is the 2,000 or 20% initial sample free of charge. And uh, I will let you answer that, And I do, but I don't think it's 20%. I think it's 2,000 words or 10%, uh, 10% if, if yes. I remember correctly. That's perfect. 2,000 words or 10%. And yes, it's perfectly free of charge. It's even free of, free of obligation. If we don't find enough uh, errors in your sample to convince you that the rest of your manuscript needs an edit, then you don't even have to uh, contract with us for a full edit. That's fine. Perfectly free of charge, free um, of obligation. <laughs> okay, I will note here that there were no extraneous edits in my uh, manuscript. There was nothing in there that did not need to be there. So, uh, yes, and no, there were we, we don't, we don't in inflate mind. our numbers. Yeah, we definitely don't inflate our numbers or try to make it seem like we're more useful than we really are. Uh, we'll really only just tell you what, what really should be fixed in your manuscript. Okay, and here's another one now. Um, would you handle compilations of shorter stories, such as a group of flash fiction that's intended to be published together? And this sounds like somebody who's taking my flash fiction course and planning on getting something out there. Uh, yes, as I said before, no limits whatsoever um, on what we edit for you, what format it's going to be in. Um, yeah, not at all. Uh, in fact, if I, if I may be allowed to mention it, uh, the How to Think Sideways anthology, that competition that came out a while ago, uh, that was also something that we edited and it was no problem. Okay. Um, all right. Are submissions mailed or electronic? Um, submissions are uploaded to the website at this point. And yeah, uh, for receiving them back, you we, we tend to email them back to the client. But if you want, if you're concerned about the security of email, we can upload it to, to a secure online storage. And we can give you a secure link to get your edit back, if you prefer that. But then maybe uh, you can email us through a contact form on the website. And you can let us know any special requirements you've got. And we can let you know whether that'll be good. And we can typically always, <laughs> you know, we, we bend over backwards to get our clients to be happy with what we do for them. Okay, let me throw in just a, a little addendum to that specific question, which is what file formats do you take? Ah, yes. Uh, at the moment, we accept only Word compatible file formats. That is, at the moment, that's only three types of files. You get your 
.doc files, your .docx files for the newer word, and your RTF files, your rich text format. The reason for that is because we do the edits in mm -hmm. word track changes view, which we found is, is the most commonly used and the, the easiest for people to see what we did, see what we're suggesting, and accepting those they want and leaving out those they don't. So word compatible files. Okay. Um, let me see. Editing and proofing. All right. I have one kind of offbeat question here. Um, do you have any recommendations for new editors? I'm part of a small creative team and we've put out a book. We are quality editors and would like to take our skills into the world. Any advice? Advice? <laughs> um, that's a difficult one. Um, uh, it's going to come back to passion, I'm guessing. <laughs> Sorry, it seems like I have a one-track mind here, but that's that's really, to me, what it what it's about in the end. If If you love what you do, and then you will usually almost automatically or by magic be good at what you do as long as you love it and other than that for a group of editors I would say marketing <laughs> which is something that I still have to work on myself I realize that but uh, yes just stick with it and get out there get people to notice you get people to see you and provide them with fantastic service because that's the only thing you can do to really set yourself apart. Okay. Um, all right. I, I basically, I think that covers it. So um, I would like to thank all of you for coming today. I and especially thank EJ for for showing up and then for for you know being willing to present this uh, really tremendous benefit for you guys, um, which I'm going to take advantage of too, because I appreciate a good deal just <laughs> like everybody else. Um, yeah. And yeah, thank you for having me and uh, you know, allowing me the chance to introduce more people to us. And we hope to see many of you uh, coming through these links and getting these uh, awesome discounts. Okay. Um, so my final sum up here then is uh, log in, go to the URL. Uh, I will make sure that uh, the login URL is uh, on the website or is on the um, YouTube page because this is going to be available publicly as well. Uh, I will make sure that folks can uh, get to EJ's page. I will make sure there is already now uh, a link directly to EJ's page from the the test page. And uh, once we are uh, done with with this chat here, just remember that you must use the links in the classroom in order to get the discounts and you will see that yellow box that I showed you when you are signed in correctly. Okay, and thank you so much for coming. Uh, this was, you had great questions and I really appreciate it everyone. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs>